LCS post game lobby where I am joined by the Fisho, by Amazing, and by Gilius. Welcome, all of you. Uh, Gilius, glad we get to have you on PGL. Congratulations on your win today. Thank you. I'm um, glad to be here. Also, honored to be joined by colleagues, great junglers, mm -hmm. just like myself. <laughs> we can talk about jungle tier list and all that kind of stuff. That we yep. can. We will talk about jungle tier list. We will talk about the patch. But first, I want to talk about this game we just saw. You just casted it. You said it was a long game, but it was an incredibly hype game. Misfits versus Fnatic. Misfits ending the seven-game winning streak from Fnatic. The last team that Fnatic lost to in week three before they went on the winning streak was also Misfits, and it was also uh, a very close one. Gilius, what were your main takeaways from this 50-minute game? Um, so, Sankooks really stepped up today, uh, played really good. I think when Sankooks performs well, uh, Misfits looks like a completely new team. Is he the key to this, this lineup? Uh, I, I think so. Mid lane is just a really broken role at the moment, like in, in professional play. And uh, I think in this patch, if you get Nash, you basically win the game, and they managed to get, get the Nash also. Yeah, and Rakan stole it. Mickey X had a fantastic <laughs> game. They got a few Nashes in this game. Yeah. Oh, man. yeah, I don't know how that happens, but... See, when we have this kind of game, and it's long, I love it. Because it's like fighting all the time, it's super tense. Last team fight, Reckless looks at the Rakan, looks at the Zaya, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna kill her, and then there's a Shen right next to her. Mm -hmm. And he just gets on, he dies. He knows it's on him, uh, even though it was a really tough situation because they were completely split up. But this kind of game was like super tense. It was super tense and for me it was very interesting to see because Misfits is always said to be a really good team, they deserve to be top three, all that stuff. But for me this was really a key game to see if they could really make it happen. And the fact that it was so close and that they stayed in the race and that they fought back for me is a big sign that they seem to have taken a step up. I don't know if you share that, uh, that thought. No, I do think so. I think that Senkook's actually showing something because beforehand he's basically been Honestly, bad. He has been inefficient. He has not really done anything for the lineup. And him actually stepping up and showing that he can be a focal point of the early game and to the mid game is something that I think is really important. As Gillis already said, I think he's the key to the lineup. And if he performs, Misfits is a contender. If he doesn't, they're merely a playoff team. All right, well, that uh, day and night difference for Misfits. Let's take a look at the standings because I have a couple of questions about our formerly top teams. G2 didn't manage to win today and Fnatic didn't manage to win today. How much should we read into that, Fisho? Uh, I think G2's draft was absolutely garbage uh, in this game. Completely misreading what actually they were supposed to do. They gave away Zyra Khan plus Galio in a meta where, as Gilly has said, if you get ahead and get Baron, you tend to win the game. So they had no lanes to could play around and they couldn't stall for long enough to actually do anything. So I think that game was, was really poor drafting that cost them a lot. So let me jump in there then, worried about a team. If it's a misread of the meta, you know that's fixable in essence, right? Uh, it should be. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they know exactly what went wrong also in game and they can fix that, but it might not be fixed just for tomorrow. If they've been practicing it's something yeah. completely different, it could look bad for them tomorrow as well. We will see. Uh, for Fnatic, now they lost this game. Gilius, and for them it seemed to be a bit more complicated because it was in the late game where they usually s thrive. Reckless was still playing absolutely on point and he still lost that game. So is that a worrisome sign for Fnatic or will they bounce back? Uh, I, I, I can't take uh, that yeah, much <laughs> info away from the standings, honestly, because it's best of ones. Um, Fnatic will, I mean, they lost today, they will bounce back next week, I guess. Tomorrow yeah, because I was tricking you because you're playing them <laughs> Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow they will lose to us, obviously. So, well, then they will bounce back next week. Yeah, they will bounce back next week. But, like, <laughs> best of ones, don't tell that much, you know. Uh, one team, a weaker team can just come in with a great plan for one game, execute, get a win. When they then enter playoffs and best of fives, they will really crumble, so... All right. Uh, it's well, hard to tell. Yeah, it is very hard to tell. As I said, a lot of these teams swing either way, depending on the week. Splice, for instance. Okay, G2 had a pretty crappy draft, according to you. But Splice had a very convincing game over G2. So where do we stand with that? You did have them in your playoff prediction, so you are not surprised. The only believer <laughs> yeah. out of the other casters. Um, I think the fact that Splice already a week or two ago started playing more around Odom in the early game actually gave them a way to win early. Mm -hmm. Um, which was really good. So that kind of translated into this. The thing had a fantastic game. Uh, thing, yeah, of course, like with the Zyra card in this one, the Galio just kind of swapped to the bottom side. So I think they show much better early games than they did in the start, which, where they were like one of the worst. And I think they're pretty good team fighters. So I actually like Splice, but I don't think they're going to be one of the best teams in Europe. 
I just think they're good enough to make playoffs. Make playoffs, and then we'll see from there. I said it's a whole different ball game between best of ones and, and best of threes, best of fives. So we'll see how that evolves. Uh, for now, though, I want to take a look at some people that have been performing in best of ones and some people maybe not that well, because Gilius took a look at the junglers in the EU LCS in the league, and you've picked out the players that you think have performed the best so far. Before we get to the list, though, I want to ask you what in your mind constitutes a good jungler? What are the features of a good jungler? Uh, so in best of ones, it's about making a like good game plan, coming in as a jungler, um, playing around your mid laner really well. Uh, often a jungler can be very good, but if his mid laner is underperforming, he will look really bad. Um, so this list is like really hard to do because I rather went in a like best of five mindset with this list. Mm -hmm. Like the top three junglers are the best ones and best of fives. If Joko is in the last ranks, it doesn't mean he... How do I explain this? I mean, Joko has looked good in best of ones, right? But I don't think he will look good in best okay. of five. Yeah. Against him He's in easy to, to kind of adapt to and yeah. Yeah. shut so him down. So you're looking ahead to playoffs already exactly. and if these teams yeah. play there. So without further ado, let's take a look at the list. And at number, number one, one pick. <laughs> who is the number one pick? I'm it's amazing! Oh. <laughs> All right, so Gilius, obviously, it seems that, you know, you think you're good in best of fives. But I kind of think you think you're also very good in best of ones. Um, I think in the start of the split, I, I showed some good games in best of ones. But the last two weeks, I think I really underperformed and um, didn't take practice uh, serious enough. Mm -hmm. And coming into this week, we practiced really hard. We were f full try hard. And uh, yeah, it's showing in the game today. So. Amazing. Uh was also thinking about this ranking, what it b would be if it if he were to make it. And I can just tell you that you definitely weren't in number one in the Amazing's list, yeah, but we don't have to show the whole thing. My, my list was more of a power ranking in the best of one setting, because mm -hmm. I think that a lot of junglers, like obviously, um, like I think Gilius, for example, like in the past four, uh, two weeks, like he has said himself that he's been underperforming. I'll definitely put him lower, where someone like Joko, he's, I think my list basically consisted of, of players that can make or break a team. And I think a lot of junglers have a, different a role on different teams. So for example, Joko, if he doesn't gank early, Giants lose every game. That's how it is. So Joko actually stepping up to the plate and saying, okay, I'm going to make some early plays, makes him a good jungler. Whereas someone, for example, like Broxa, even though he's still great and he was actually high on my list, um, doesn't have to always do that and doesn't quite have that kind of ability to do that either. Yeah, that one jumps out to me. Broxa only at number six and Xerxes at number four. Those are two ones that Pique my interest. Let's start with Xerxes, uh, because when we look at Splice, we said like the top side of their map isn't really always taking over games, and Xerxes was quite passive in the first weeks of the split the show. So, how do you think he will adapt going into best of fives? Um, I think I actually think Xerxes deserves to be top four. I think mechanically he's very good. Um, he still needs to learn a lot on exactly like how to optimally play the map uh, as a jungler. I think that's what he's learning a lot on Splice now, but. In a best of five, I can see him also kind of surprised a little bit with certain picks uh, in the way he's playing. Like his Ivern is always one you have to keep in mind that can actually be super valuable. Uh, I don't think mechanically good. he's super gifted. So I like him actually being high on the list. The one I'm a little bit surprised about is Cold at number seven mm -hmm. and then Pride at number 10. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't necessarily disagree too much, uh, but I want to know why you think Pride is number 10, because Shaga was pretty hyped about having him signed early on as this like big talent who, of course, would do a lot. Um, I, I would actually not change it. I would keep Pride there, one hundred percent. I think he's. Oh, I just want to know why. That's basically. Oh, you know, want to know why? Um, it doesn't seem like he really understands like the the game on the highest level strategically. Uh, I think he has great mechanics and a lot of potential, but I think he he doesn't do creative stuff. He's not really. He's not really flexible with his champions. He either plays only carries or only tanks. Um, he's really predictable in the things he does. Like uh, today, I had no tracker knife, but I always knew where he was. It was pretty easy to play against. Do you and think I think in best of sorry, I think in best of fives he will really crumble. I, I think he will get absolutely dumpstered. Yeah, sorry to jump in. That's yeah. what I meant. Like if they then get into playoffs, what will happen there? Do you think these are all things that? Are things that evolve by time? Do you see enough base in Pride that you think, all right, he just needs time to nurture all these things? I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say because Xerxes, when he came in as a rookie, he was super smart, uh, destroying people, picking weird champions, throwing <laughs> people off. Yep. So I don't know. And he's not even a rookie, right? He played the whole year on Rocket. What 
that's what people forget. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much higher you can go. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to go back to Colt. I, I think Colt will be really good in best of fives. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a very smart player and he... That's why, that's why I would put him higher. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would put him higher, but I don't really know who, like, it's hard, Oof. you know? Yeah. yeah. I would put him nah, over Broxa. It's hard to put him over Broxa because Broxa has international experience now. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It's a lot of factors that go into it than what would happen in best of five. So someone has to be number 10, someone has to be number nine. So we'll be wiser about six teams at least when they play in playoffs. Final thought, is there anything else you guys want to say about any of these junglers? Memento, number five, obviously had a fantastic one game today on Kha'Zix, but yeah. we've seen good early games from him also consistently. I think he's also smart. Mm -hmm. And he's like the main, he's the captain, he's the shot caller on his team. Like everything they do kind of built around him. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure on him, and I think actually he's he's really good on like some of these different carries, uh, especially Kha'Zix was fantastic oh, yeah. today. So I like Memento as well. All right. I actually like our jungle yeah. pool. Surprisingly uh, quiet about the no, list. No, I mean, where would you be in the list? Yeah. <laughs> you actually want an honest opinion? Sure. Yes. Yeah. I think I would be in the top six, maybe top five. Because the thing is, for me, it's about, like, at least in best of fives, it's about preparation. I think a lot of the jungles nowadays, they don't quite understand the preparation part. I think they understand the playmaking part as in terms of, like, making a momentary decision, so, someone like Joko, but they don't quite understand what it takes to actually transcend the team, make them even better than they actually are. Because in playoffs, you have to step up and you have to understand not just ward, ward coverage, you have to understand pathing patterns, you have to understand your own pathing patterns and, like, basically distinctive play styles that certain teams bring onto the table. And I don't think that a lot of jungles have the, me I don't want to say mental capacity, but they don't quite understand what it takes to beat the enemy team. They just know what makes themselves win, if that makes sense. Huh. Uh, you would be under Cadrill on my list. <laughs> Glad you're not making this. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. Thank you very much for giving us this list, and we'll follow up and see how they do in playoffs, these junglers. But today we also got the first look at patch 8.4, so we're going to break down some things that stood out so far. I know you guys have been waiting for an EU version of this or that. We heard you, <laughs> so we're going to talk about the patch in that or this. Okay. First up, that or this. Gilius? Or Banner of Command. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Who do we want? Or yeah, Banner of Command? Uh, I'm, take, I'm, I'm taking this. I'm, I'm going <laughs> with the, this. I want the Banner. Ban. Yeah, I'm going for this as well. <laughs> oh, three times. Okay, next one then. Reckless. Or? Wait, is he, is he coming? I mean, does Reckless, is Reckless going to play Tristana? Or Banner of Command. Ban every game. Okay. Ben, I'm <laughs> going for that. <laughs> yeah, I want yeah. Reckless. I'm so going really badly. Yeah. He, he didn't lose today I mean, against... Yeah, 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 but I, I'm no, taking he Reckless really good. here. Reckless, I'm Reckless. taking Reckless. All right, we finally, one last one. Banner of Command? Actually, that's, or Banner uh, of that's Command? a that too, actually. That yes, 100% this. Really? <laughs> really? After <laughs> today. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Well, thank you guys very much. Uh, this is obviously a bit of a joke. We're not going to be doing that or this. We do love this or that uh, over when uh, Jat and Kobe do it or Zale this week. But we do want to talk about the patch and we do want to talk about Banner of Command. The first games of the day, we thought there was no counterplay. Then H2K offered mm -mm. some counterplay with the hard engage. What I I came into this uh, week and said, okay, it's gonna suck if you lose Baron, but there are some things you can do. Name them. Dematerialize if you save it for late game. If you have a stalling comp, you can use it on the, especially the first Baron you lose to kill instantly kill the the wave. Oh, sorry, kill the banner. So that's one thing. We saw Hillsing actually do that in the last game they played. It's the only one. Uh, I think the other one is, it's a tough one. But if you run a comp with a lot of engage. It's obviously it's tough because you have to win the fight, but at least you can try and force a fight when you are getting sieged on. The problem is if the enemy team has a way stronger mid game comp, mm -hmm. you're probably just going to lose that fight and then it's really tough. Then a Cyan knocking it away. Tom Kench can Q and W it to eat it. Buys a lot of time uh, as well. But then he needs to walk up, right? Yeah, he needs to get in range. Of, I think he can get in range <laughs> enough or try to at least. I mean, none of these are perfect solutions. Yeah, I was going to say, but this, by the way. You smite it? Yeah, it does true damage. But it doesn't it's kill like, it, sadly. Yeah, it almost. Like. Yeah, yeah. I guess all of these kind of some game minion dematerializers, you gotta then save the slot, save some oh, of the Oh, it has to be the support least. properly. It has to be the support, then the hard engage is comp dependent and also doesn't always work. We saw that from H2K. I think we're gonna take a look at that because they did get the hard engage, they got the fight, but it oh, didn't balanced. work in the end. So it's obviously mean, overpowered. It's, it's, it's pretty overpowered. overpowered. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, uh, Gillius, what do you think? Uh, it's, it's pretty unbalanced. I, I actually didn't know about this. Uh, the whole like week of scrims, there was not a single banner of command. Really? And then today we watched the first EU LCS game and we saw the banner stacks and we were like, okay, 
we're gonna buy some banners today. That's a thing. <laughs> and it's actually pretty broken. Like you, it's way too far away, the creep. Like you almost can't kill it. And then the cooldown is not even that high. The price of the item is not even high. So mm -hmm. it's pretty OP, yeah. It's pretty strong. So we'll have to see tomorrow if there are more counter moves to it. I'm sure we're still going to see a lot of Banner of Commands. Uh, some other changes that we tracked on the patch is the average first Baron time compared to previous patches. So the Baron actually gets taken earlier on average today, at least on this patch. Then after that, you get the buff. So and you can use the Banner of Command. But how come? They are being taken earlier than Gilius. Um So with Tracker's Knife being removed, it snowballs the game like much faster. Um, if the support is out of wards and has to recall, like let's say you are like deep in the enemy jungle, you have full deep vision, you see the support is recalling for wards, you know that the enemy has zero chances to get any ward down, so you can just do Nash. And today, as example, we were ahead and Jizuka and me just two man Nash because mm -hmm. we just choked them out. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the tracker's knife change. I would say. Well, the tracker's knife change outside of just Baron, all the objectives or all the vision. You mentioned, I think, in one of the games as well. When you're behind, it's so very hard to see anything yeah, of the map impossible. and get vision out. Yeah, I mean, the problem with the, uh, as I said, like tracker's knife. Before, if you were behind, you could place two wards, go back to base as a jungler, instantly get two new wards, and then you could, um, you know, place one, and then the, you have one you could move around, and you constantly try at least. Uh, to get some vision going. Now you have to constantly wait for a cooldown on a trinket that only lasts two minutes at level 18. Mm -hmm. So that's really late in the game. You're going to get that. Before there's like 90 seconds, you know, 100 seconds. And you pop in one ward. They have a control ward already. They just kill it. And you're like, well, guys, I'm useless for another like, you know, minute yeah. or something. And it's just, it just, it's almost impossible. I think blue trinkets and then try and pop them down in Baron to see when they're doing it. Seems to be the best way to do it, but the moment you lose in the mid game and you can't defend properly against Baron, it gets really difficult to play. So also, it, yeah. uh, another problem is if you, the junglers have to keep the yellow trinket. Like mm -hmm. if they keep the yellow trinket, they will not be able to sweep the vision in their jungle, which chokes them out even harder. And if they actually get a sweeper, they even lack more wards. So it's a really rough spot right yeah, now. That's what is we it a saw good today. change, do you think? I, I think it's good, yeah. Like, um, if you play a good early game, you win the game. And uh, if you get the first Nash, which is a challenge, like the, the team that, get, that gets the first Nash is supposed to win the game, in my opinion. So it's, not, it's a nice change. Well, you guys, when you got your seven wins uh, in the beginning of the split, it was definitely off a lot of early game moves and aggression and being to snowball that. So is this kind of a good change for you? You know, if we get that early game strength back, we'll be able to close out games? I think um, for some junglers, this change is good because the wards they placed were absolutely ridiculous. I think I placed really good wards uh, with the old tracker's knife, like um, I, I had a really good idea of the vision game. So I, I wouldn't say it's a buff to me, but I, I don't really mind it either. Mm -hmm. uh, I Like right now, today, I had to tell Jack Troll like five times, hey, Jack Troll, can you ward here, please? Like this is pretty annoying, you know, I have yeah. to tell him ward here, please, because he's the only guy who has wards. Yeah. But like some games when you build Eye of the Watcher, it's easier to play because your mid laner gets four wards. Uh, but today we didn't have that. So mm -hmm. yeah. I actually wonder if we're going to see some support items on the junglers to actually have the path coming in. Because I don't think that Targon is that bad if you buy it really, really early on. Hmm. I think that may be something. I've tried it in solo queue, especially on Lee Sin, because otherwise you don't get any wards. Well, but we're definitely going to see it in mid laners. <laughs> But at some point, some like we already saw in the LCK, it was actually built before this patch mm -hmm. by Crown. Uh, I think it was Crown who did it, um, where he went for the support item in mid to get the wards because mm -hmm. it's so easy to get the 500 gold. Some top laners, maybe now that everyone is playing tanks, if the ban of command thing gets nerfed and you don't have to rush that as a second item, I could see some that top could be laners an opening. Yeah. do it as well. And you just you find other ways to get wards, yeah, uh, that late game you can sell it, but. Until you get to that point, it's super valuable. All right, so Banner of Command is pretty, pretty, pretty strong. But this vision change means that you're also in a position where it's harder for you to stop the enemies from taking the objectives when they're already ahead. So could that maybe be another factor why also Baron is so, uh, the empowering is so strong? Because they get Baron more often, because it's easier to go for those objectives if sure. the other guy doesn't have yeah. any vision. Yeah. It's all a good combination. Yeah, it just starts to snowball. That suddenly makes teams also target Baron much earlier for that reason, because yeah. they know how valuable it is to get. Are you sad that the games went faster today, Mark? Uh, I mean, we actually the had... last one went really long, We actually. had two games that went above 50 minutes mm -hmm. of back and forth fighting. So I think this was a good 
was middle ground. Packed, we had so. some quick yeah. games and some long games, but all the games were action packed, yeah. and I think that was good because I don't want the 8.1 meta of nothing happening unless Vitality plays. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that uh, is interesting, and we'll hope that continues tomorrow, because Week 7 and the race for playoffs continue then, with only five games left for each team in the regular season. These are the matches. Vitality's going up against Fnatic. Can Vitality pull off a 2-0 and zero a week? Gilius, of course, thinks yes. Amazing, do you think they can? I mean, I predicted Fnatic, but I do think that Vitality, after they're showing today, can actually make it happen. Mm, you sure? Can, yes. Will, no. Will, no. Oh. <laughs> so what will it come down to? Because Fnatic didn't win today. I mean, they, they were close. It was a close game. Uh, what does it come down to? Boring answer. Depends on the draft. I think if Fnatic go full late game again, they could fall far behind against Vitality and then give up an early Baron, which could hurt them a lot. But I think Fnatic might actually change and play a little bit more around the early game. Uh, and that's going to even it out. Yeah, they have been going pretty late. Uh, Rockout versus Splice is our first game. Do you think Splice can finally get a 2-0 and zero week? Amazing. Rocket looked pretty good today, no? Yeah. So I actually... Like, they have to keep their tradition alive to just lose every <laughs> week, and it's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Uh, Gilius, obviously, playoffs is in just a couple of weeks. Yep. Two weeks and one game day, actually. Do you already mentally think about, you know what, we should be preparing already for how we're going to do then? It's really bad if we lose a lot of games now, even though we end up in playoffs. Do you want to put on a consistent good performance in the next couple um, of games? For me, it's about having good practice. Like, the results don't matter too much. Obviously, it's nice if we get a semi-finals bye. Mm -hmm. We can be a bit more lazy then, but <laughs> I don't mind That's going. That's how it works. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't really mind going to quarters yeah. and just sweeping everyone there. Mm -hmm. Like I, I legit see. I don't see much competition in this league. I, the weeks we lost, we lost because we fucked up, and we are. There's no enemies. We are our own enemy, and when we play bad, we can lose to anyone. When we play good, we we can beat anyone. So. Would when you, playoffs arrive, we will beat that run. Would you say you're macro geniuses or? <laughs> I, think, I, I think our macro memeing. is pretty good. Yeah. I'm just me. Uh, Gillies, tomorrow versus <laughs> Fnatic, you already won that first game yep. earlier in the split. So you would have a very good head to head there. It's two and zero over them, which could be very good if you're challenging for the top spots and you could take first place there. So it's super important. Yeah, tomorrow we will bring the 2 0 home. Yeah? <laughs> I, 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 I legit have no doubt in my mind. Okay, like, after Fnatic's performance today, um, they I don't really like Caps talked so big in, in interviews and then they deliver this performance. So, yeah. Ooh, I am excited for that <laughs> matchup. Well, that is tomorrow, but be sure to stick around for tonight's action in the NALCS Academy. Clutch Gaming versus Opti Gaming is the first matchup there. If you didn't catch all of the EU action, you can also watch our rebroadcast following the show in North America. So you can just watch the whole time, then get a couple of hours of sleep, and then watch EU LCS again. It's fantastic. Yeah, you can wake up in the morning. I think then the rebroadcast is over, but then you can watch LCK. Yep. And then LPL. Watch LPL. And then EU LCS. Oh, and then NALCS. And then okay, NALCS. Skip the, skip the LPL. <laughs> <laughs> watch it all. Well, thank you guys very much for joining me. Gilius, fantastic performance today. Good luck thank tomorrow you. as well. That is all from us in Berlin for tonight. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. for Rocket versus Splice. Until then, have a great night. Okay,